We are live. Okay. Yes. Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, this is an AIOS uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the title is Spotlight on Pediatric Retina. And uh, here in this webinar, the pediatric retina means uh, in this seminar, I'm not saying in general because pediatric retina is a very big area. In this, for this uh, webinar, we, uh, it's retinopathy of prematurity. And the retinopathy of prematurity has gained a lot of importance in last uh, at least uh, two to three decades for the reasons that the, there is an improvement in the new technology. Uh, and the uh, understanding of the etiology and the course of the disease. And uh, as I said, the technology, I mean, the means to catch the clinical uh, picture of uh, the retina of the neonates. So with this development, the development which has taken place in recent, uh, say, maybe, you know, 22 uh, decades or maybe 20 years, there has been a lot of enthusiasm, uh, not among, uh, not only among the, uh, the practicing technologists, but also about the young people, you know. I remember, so the Gravi was for me, that when we used to go to, you know, ROP meetings, there will, there will be a handful of people, maybe, you know, uh, say, uh, you know, 10 people, 20 people, and now the hall is full, whichever meeting we are going, whichever conference, uh, we are going. And not only this, uh, just a small uh, mention about the Indian Retinopathy of Immature Society, ROP Society. We started with uh, Subhadra is here, and we, about seven or eight people, we started in Bangalore uh, in 2016. And uh, now, to your uh, surprise or our surprise, we have more than 300 people who are. Uh, you know, uh, with us in this uh, uh, mission of retinopathy of immaturity. So uh, there's a very good beginning and uh, it's uh, something, you know, very good for the society because the uh, disease affects the newness and the newness, uh, you know, uh, they have a long life to go. Like if we remove a cataract blindness, it will only be for say 10, 20 years, but if we remove blindness for the children, it will be, it will go on for 60, 70 years. And this adds to the growth, not only of the family, but also of the entire country and the entire world. So with these words, I will now request uh, Dr. Subhadra Jalali, and Subhadra needs no introduction. I tell her she is the Jhansi Kirani, of retinopathy of prematurity. <laughs> so I will now request uh, Subhadra to speak on uh, her topic, I think is screening and a uh, whole lot of things. So Subhadra, please carry on. Thank you, Professor Azad. Uh, I know that many of you know, but some may not know that the first ROP Yatra in our country was undertaken by Professor Azad. Uh, almost 25, 30 years ago. Yes. That time, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he started the ROP work in Delhi. And then he was the first one. I think that must have been the first time for any disease in the country as far as the ophthalmology is concerned that he held workshops in different cities. He came to Hyderabad also. I think 10, 12 cities he went uh, under WHO mandate. And then he conducted these workshop guiding us. We had just started our program and he guided and set the path, the trailblazer, as you call it, uh, to hold our hands and show us the way uh, how we need to go about doing ROP. So that gave us, sitting in a small place like Hyderabad, a national perspective that what we are trying to do is going to have an impact. And today, as he said, we have reached a level where I think in most districts, uh, there would be some service available for ROP screening. So the webinar today is to uh, go from some of the basics for those who are new and then to show how the technology with tenderness can upscale 
the program and how people who don't have access to certain technologies can still do the screening, do the imaging, uh, explain to the parents and communicate with colleagues by photographs uh, which they can take in their clinic. Uh, so I'm going to start with a small movie. Uh, I'm a movie buff, so we'll start with a small movie to explain that, you know, whatever we are doing uh, for these babies, what impact it has and where is it all leading to. It's not just, you know, looking at an eye and treating it. So I hope the video will play. Uh, let me know if you can hear the sound in the uh, video. You can hear? Your video is playing, but the voice is... <laughs> audio, audio is not working. Okay, okay, okay. I think I have to... When you share screen, there is an option called share sound. So you can... Yeah. Yes, we uh, can. Dr. when you click share screen once, if uh, left hand side bottom there is something a box called uh, share sound, just check that. Okay, I will just uh, share it again. Yes, ma'am. So I have to say share screen and before. Okay, I have to say share sound. Okay. <laughs> Normally, all of us are one child or two child, but when I'm the third month pregnant, at that time, I know that I am carrying the triplets. If you don't have a problem, you don't have a happy song, you don't have a happy song. At 28th week, they are born premature. Uh, we have spent two months in NSU. Babies have been uh, kept on ventilator, CPAP, oxygen. It's been a quite a difficult journey for us. Normally, premature babies have some issues with them, but specifically with the specifically ROP and Vera test, they don't know the issue with them. When we are in KMC training, that time they said Vera test and ROP test, they gave the information, but how to do it, how to do it, how to do it, they didn't say anything. The main drawback is rural area. The correct guidance line. One day I was going through the internet and uh, in YouTube uh, I saw some ROP uh, video. I saw a video of video of एक दिन पहले मैं मार्डम का वीडियो देखा, नेक्स्ट दिन मैं आरोपी टेस्टिंग को गए तो डॉक्टर इमरजेंसी में स्पेसिफिकली मैं इंस्टिट्यूट का नाम एलवी प्रसाद आई इंस्टिट्यूट में सुबद्रा मार्डम होता, वो मार्डम ही करना ये सिचुएशन तो सीरियस हो गया, ज़्यादा दिन लेट हो गया। We have kept our faith in Subhadra Madam and completely cooperated with Madam. Madam treatment करने के बाद ज़्यादा improvement हो गया. Last year, I changed up all and couldn't have a pretty hospital, pretty pediatrician, pretty pre-born baby or low weight baby key compulsory got test like orange awareness. So, main ROP and Bera test, we take orange awareness in Valley and Jeff PC such. Then, all awareness is the in this situation, sir, our initial loan, a child over to clear change. So I think that, you know, just to say that this situation should not arise, where the parents have to ask Google, 
whether my child needs eye screening. So while we do improve the awareness of our neonatologist, I think it's shocking to know that sometimes parents have gone to ophthalmologist and the ophthalmologist has done a torchlight examination. They have just looked at the eye with the torch and told the parents everything is okay. So that means that, you know, from our ophthalmology sites also, we need a lot of improvement to understand what is ROP, how to do the screening. And the first thing is people who don't know about ROP should not screen. Everybody should, you know, train, learn about ROP. And only after training should somebody, you know, uh, venture into this because it's going to have a lifetime of impact. So ROP is not like any other simple disease. We need training. Uh, it's not a very long training. Uh, it's a short training period, but without training, please don't screen or do treatment. That's not being fair to the parents. So I'm just going to give a few uh, important points about uh, ROP and what all we should know and how should we go about it. I really love this statue, which is in Geneva, uh, which marks the you know uh, conquer of humanity on polio, sorry, on smallpox. And what this statue depicts is not the doctors. What it depicts is the health workers who were instrumental in going door to door in an era where there was no internet, no WhatsApp, no phones, not even a mail uh, which could reach in less than a month from one station to the other. But the global community, in spite of lack of these uh, modern communication things, could work together through different religions, caste, class, uh, ethnicities, continents, and conquer smallpox. And it was done by the health workers. The other important thing with this statue shows is the needle. The technological advance from a single prong needle to a double prong needle, which is shown here, this small technology change improved the efficacy of the uh, you know, smallpox um, vaccine delivery. And so something which was efficient only in 20, 30% patients could now be efficacy in more than 98%. So I just want to highlight that our mission and our aim of making everyone see and preventing ROP blindness is going to be dependent on the health workers who are with the mother and the baby all the time and the small technological advances whether it is imaging or injections or laser the technology and tenderness together is going to make us reach there so that is what is my you know perspective that we have conquered so many uh, serious disorders as a global community and if we all get together both nationally and globally then we can definitely win the battle. So some people might think why ROP for me I mean this is for Dr. Subhadra or this is for Dr. Azad or you know this is for the retina specialist no the ROP is for everyone screening for ROP can be done by any ophthalmologist with little training and little help with the equipments or even without equipment. The reason for this is, of course, ROP gets you money. You don't want to keep on sending patients to somebody else. You want to screen them. And screening is very simple if you are well-trained. And the volumes are increasing. I will show the data that there's more than tenfold increase in the number of babies who are coming for screening. And sooner or later, you will want to screen. And if you are a new uh, you know, doctor in a new city, the patients are not going to come you for that FACO, even if you are a very well-trained FACO surgeon. But if you screen their baby for ROP, they will recognize you as a very talented, very skillful person. And I assure you that the whole family will get hooked to you. Then they will get their grandfather for cataract to you. They will get all their red eyes to you and all their eye problems they will get to you. And of course, there's a bonus that these children almost always get myopia. That is your, you know, mutual fund. When they grow up, you're going to do their LASIK or their myopia. So irrespective of which specialty you are in, you become that unique ophthalmologist in the city who can screen and it just needs skills of fundoscopy to be done. So the other thing is that this newborn eye problems are going to come to our homes. We are the people who access IVF. We are the people who access incubator care. It could be our friend, our sister, our brother. So we should be aware as doctors about ROP, ROP screening, 
and it's not only about ROP screening, but the whole gamut of newborn eye screening itself. So I have seen ophthalmologists, children going blind from retinal disorders because they did not screen. I have seen retinal doctors, children going blind because they were not aware that a newborn baby's retina can be screened for coats or FEVR or ROP or whatever. So I think basic fundoscopy of newborns is a requirement. We are not doing it because we are not trained for it. But if we could do it, we would prevent so much of newborn blindness, including ROP. So I don't have any financial interest in this uh, lecture, but yes, I, our organization does get a lot of funding from various people uh, to run the ROP program. So that's my disclosure. So, you know, these are very tiny citizens and you see this newborn baby is mostly with eye closed and we don't want them to land up with blindness. They're not born blind. They became blind while they were under care of doctors. So here is the 10,000th baby that we screened. She was born and taken care of in this very high end uh, NICU, which the government has opened uh, in the coastal Andhra and in all the districts of the country. And you can see here, everything is available there. And this child survived, uh, you know, the stormy neonatal course, her twin died, but then she came to us at three months of age. You can see the leukocoria in her eyes. She was blind and she's going to be blind for life. You know, so the, the Indian government and many other governments of uh, developing countries are building these NICUs to reach the sustainable development goals of reducing neonatal mortality. And we're very happy with that, that children who are dying in millions in our country are now being saved. But that safe should also be accompanied by the safety net of ROP screening, which is slow. So this baby wants to know who stole my vision when the natural history of ROP is known since 1960s. This is the pyramid which shows that right in 1941, when the first incubator was set up in Boston Children's Hospital, in 1942, the first blind ROP was published or reported by Terry et al. So we know that any city, any community where a SNCU is set up or an ICU is set up, and it's making the babies live, the ROP is going to come there sooner or later. So the ROP screening should be part and parcel of any newborn center which is set up, whether in the government or private sector. And we have to keep on facilitating our skills to go and screen in the NICU or those who are referred to us. So our cities and towns are going to have babies and they are going to be referred to us. So the second epidemic which happened, the first epidemic, it happened from 1950s to 1970s. In the developed countries, it is still ongoing in our country, but it came down there because they started doing what is called as high quality newborn care. So good anti- speaker. Again, we have had an upshoot. So in India and other developing countries, we are still grappling with the first epidemic and the second epidemic is already on us because we are now having IVF care, trip, twins, triplets, as you saw in this video. And more and more babies are surviving, tiny babies. So we are going to struggle with what is called a third epidemic, which is characterized by babies of different weights, different age uh, from rural urban areas and large numbers. The numbers are huge. That is what is, you know, striking at us. So to give briefly that ROP is an atrogenic disease, it's not an ancient disease. Uh, wherever newborn care is set up, the ROP will occur. And the smaller survivors and the suboptimal care, you can see here, this heater is supposed to heat all the babies in that room. So obviously the babies will survive, but they will be hypothermic. You can see the uncontrolled oxygen, which is given as compared to high-end care where there's one nurse for one baby and controlled oxygen is given. So all these factors, it will take us decades to correct. We don't have that many nurses. We don't have that many blenders. We don't have the quality care parameters. So it's going to take many years. Uh, and so we are going to face severe ROP in our community. Still, these things are corrected. But the babies cannot wait for that. So what we can do is to be there on time and screen on time. Then we can cure a lot of these babies even when they come with severe disease. So ROP is a very good condition to screen because the babies are already in the hospital. So you don't have to go door to door survey. The parents are already motivated because they are spending so much time, money to get that baby to save its life. And these babies, as you can see in this uh, photograph, these babies are born with a normal retina. 
So there is no ROP at birth. It's just that the retina is incompletely vascularized. The vessel is supposed to grow every week, dichotomously branching vessels from the disc to periphery. And they reach the periphery by 40 weeks, which is normal pregnancy. So if the baby is born at 28 weeks or 30 weeks, what you will see is what you see in this picture. I hope you can see my arrow is that the retina is incompletely vascularized. But otherwise, it is normal. There's no vitreous abnormality. There's no leukocoria. So the child has a potential for 6-6 six, six vision. And then we have a time lag. After 15, 20, 30 days, this is what will happen. The vessels will enlarge. They will dilate. They will start bleeding. And if we don't detect it at that time, and this is a silent disease, then this is what will happen. By 6 to 7 weeks, the whole retina will start detaching, stage 4. Even at this stage, some vision can be salvaged. But if, again, this is missed, then by two, three months of age, they will get this leukocoria. And not only leukocoria, the stage five, then that is progressive. And slowly the cornea, scarring, and the secondary glaucoma, thysis, they will happen. So this natural history, we already know. We have a time window. It is a rapidly progressive disease, but still it gives us two, three weeks time window to screen, to see, and treat it. So globally, it's a big disorder. I'm not going to go to the epidemiology, but you can see that the developing countries are going to have a large share of these babies because of the number of babies we produced. So in our hospital, we did a study. This was published in Journal Pediatrics. That what we found is that in our hospital, the between 2000 and 2013, there has been a tenfold increase in the number of babies who come to us. So that's why I was saying that nobody can ignore it. The vitamin D deficiency has come down. The congenital cataracts and glaucoma are almost same because the population is increasing. But look at what is happening to the preterm babies. Uh, they are rapidly increasing. And this was 2013. By now, uh, we have huge numbers. So what do we need to do? We need to keep the premature baby in the center of our program. And it's a race against time. So we should not bicker and blame game. But we should get everybody on board. <coughs> that is the parents. <coughs> Sorry the neonatologists, the social workers. And there's a little bit requirement of anesthetists. Uh, it's not a huge requirement. If you have good neonatologists, they can take care of most of the things. If you have to do surgery, then of course you need anesthetists. And then many of these babies need glasses and rehab care from early age. So that needs to be put in place. But the major part is done by the IK specialist parents and the neonatologists. So the screening guidelines have been done. We are thankful to Professor Azad, who chaired the committee on the national guidelines for ROP uh, four or five years ago. And these are based on the fact that the children in our country are different and the neonatal care is different uh, than others. And that is why we need to have guidelines which are specifically for India. And we will not follow the American or UK guidelines. The, the data is here, which shows that most of the severe ROP in UK and USA occurs in very tiny babies and low weight babies. But in India, here we have the daily data from Dr. Azad from Al Institute, our Hyderabad data, Madras, that time it was called Chennai data. So we can see here that almost 16 to 20% babies who have severe ROP in our countries, and that is also true for other developing countries, are big babies, large babies. So our Inclusion criteria, which is given on the Rashtribal Swasthya Karikram website, you can all download it from there. It tells us that we must screen any baby who is less than 2 kg and less than 34 weeks. So it's easy to remember, 2, 3, 4 rule. So this is, for instance, also an exam. Somebody may be asking you, what is the ROP screening criteria? So you just say 2, 3, 4, 2 kg and 34 weeks. And the first screening to be done within 30 days. So all these parameters are quite easy to remember. Of course, if the baby is abandoned or we don't know the gestational age accurately, <laughs> or the baby is more than 2 kg and more than 34 weeks, but had neonatal problems like sepsis, oxygen, multiple blood transfusions, then all these babies should also be screened. And the onus is on the neonatologist to contact the eye specialist. And it's the onus of the eye specialist to be well trained and know about ROP and then screen on time. So what are the other risk factors? As we said, prematurity is the major factor. It's a standalone factor. So anybody less than 34 weeks has 18 to 20% chance of getting severe ROP. And birth weight is again a surrogate measure. So sometimes we don't get the last menstrual date or the gestation age is not well known. So birth weight, yes, low birth weight babies have more risk. Babies who receive antenatal steroids to their mother for lung maturity, they have less risk. 
So antenatal steroids should be promoted. Already Government of India advisory is there to give antenatal steroids to high-risk mothers in the second trimester. And those who receive these steroids have less uh, severe ROP or less chance of ROP. So antenatal weight gain of the mother and anemia of the mother, we have found influences the retina. So our study, which we published in AJO, said that if the mother was anemic or did not gain weight during pregnancy, then her baby will be born with less vascularized retina than another baby of the same age and weight whose mother was well fed. So yes, maternal health also has an influence on ROP and more data is coming out on that. Then oxygen, oxygen is a huge culprit. The ROP doesn't happen due to oxygen, but the oxygen worsens the ROP. So the education of the nurses, the number of nurses looking after the babies, uh, that's very critical because if they have too many babies, they will just put the oxygen at high level so that the alarm doesn't go off. So we need to maintain the SPO2 level between 80 to 93% in the incubators and pulse oximeters of good quality are the requirements. Blending of oxygen is required because pure oxygen should not be given. Now, all these three things are not available in many centers. There may be few pulse oximeters, there may not be enough nurses or educated, or they may not have good blenders. So that is why this problem of ROP is much more and in bigger babies in our country. So what we do practically on the ground is that when we go to NICUs and we find that there is some baby with an immature retina or a zone one retina, then that baby we point out to the doctors and nurses and say, at least this baby, please follow all the quality parameters because this baby is at a very high risk of detachment or APROP or CROP. So at least even if you have only two, three pulse oximeters, then at least this baby should be on pulse oximeter and monitor this baby. Avoid fluctuations of oxygen. This is another practice they do that they will sometimes give oxygen, sometimes they will stop it. That's worse than putting the baby on continuous oxygen. Then anemia we have found is a huge factor. Every baby who comes to us with detachment has anemia. So we have found that, you know, if you correct the anemia right from day one, so when the baby comes to you for screening or for treatment, you do laser or injection, please get the hemoglobin checked and make sure it's 10 or more. If it is seven, eight, they should give transfusion. They need hematinix and the weight gain and the lung, uh, you know, issues. So this is very important. The data has shown that slow weight gain or prolonged weight loss is a very good indicator of severe ROP. So infection control, again, babies who develop sepsis or who develop pneumonia because the healthcare worker did not wash their hands or did not, you know, do barrier nursing they will develop more ROP. So these are the things we need to educate the nurses about hand sepsis, about weight gain, feeding issues. So we work with a neonatologist and get these corrected because if you just treat the eye and you don't correct the systemic issues, your treatment will not be successful. Your lasers will not be as good outcomes or your injection will definitely have poor outcomes if you have not worked with the neonatologist and educated them about these factors which can worsen the ROP in spite of your treatment. Now, when you're going to screen, it's important to do safe screening. Babies can die after screening if proper precautions were not taken. So they are fragile. You need to handle them gently. You need to make sure that baby is fed, burped, and is not going to hypoglycemia, and they're not waiting for a long time in your OPD under AC conditions. They are well wrapped because they can't maintain their temperature. And don't put you know, unsafe eye drops. So the safe drops are written here. 2.5% phenylephrine and 1% tropicamide. So previously we had to make this in our clinic because it was not available. Now it is available uh, as a combination and uh, we can use that ready-made combination. Don't use 5% or 10% or atropine. 2.5% phenylephrine and 1% tropicamide, just two or three drops should be put after putting um, the topical anesthetic and wash the pulse and respiration and always wipe from the surface because they can enter through the skin and cause toxicity. Then use of speculum is quite easy. You can just put it in the eye without scratching the cornea. Sometimes people are quite apprehensive that, you know, small baby, how can I do indirect? Actually, they are quite cooperative. You just need to wrap them up, bundle them up. Uh, one nurse has to hold the baby and they cooperate. You can see everything. And what you need to do is just look at the vessel. You don't have to see anything else. You just have to look at the toxicity of the vessels, whether the retinal vessels are normal or abnormal. If they're abnormal, you refer or you start thinking of treatment. So the most important thing is the Tisdin Roshnike, what we say that within 20 to 30 days of birth, if you see these patients, then you will pick up the disease in a very early stage. 
before the retinopathy has gone into a vitropathy, before the traction has occurred, then you can do very effective treatment. So that work with the neonatologist that every baby has to come at 30 days. If it comes on 31st day, you will send a letter to them and tell them this baby is late and find out why the baby came late. So the more they comply with the timing of screening, so it's not that we can't screen early. If parents are leaving the town, they're not going to come back. We can screen at 10 days. We can screen just before they discharge at 15 days. But we may not see that much of ROP. Sometimes we are surprised we see severe ROP even 15 days old babies if they were on heavy oxygen. So, but our deadline definitely is 30 days. We don't want children to come after that. But if they're very tiny, then please screen by 20 days. That is the national guidelines. Screen early to pick up aggressive disease. So this is just to show pictorially when we do the fundus photo, it is not difficult. You can see a normal newborn retina should show few vessels and dichotomously branching vessels. The pupil should dilate fully and the media should be clear. This tells us there's no ROP. The moment ROP starts, what we see, the first sign is tortuosity at the posterior pole. So again, this is not difficult to see. The media becomes a little hazy. The pupil takes longer to dilate. It may not dilate fully. And the first sign you see is posterior pole dilatation tortuosity. That itself tells you there's ROP and we need to act. Now, when there is more dilatation tortuosity, then of course, everybody will pick it up that there is ROP. Now, the disease can be low risk, which means that there's just some dilatation tortuosity and stage one, not just a line, and the pupil is dilating well. But if the vascular pattern changes, so sometimes people miss this stage. So this baby was missed. It was written as normal. And this is the commonest thing which people miss. You can see that they are looped vessels. The media is clear, but you can miss. You may think the red color is normal retina. It is not. There's no line here. But what you see is loop vessels. This is very serious. This is high risk ROP. And of course, sometimes then you see new vessels coming into the vitreous, which is called stage three or threshold. So you can see here that what you need to see in the retina is the vascular pattern. Is it dichotomously branching, few vessels, clear media, people dilating well, or there is some abnormality in the vessel? If any vessel is abnormal, you just know that there's an abnormality and I need to refer if I'm not the specialist treating. So this baby I missed. So I saw this baby many years ago and I saw that, you know, there was some abnormal vessel, but I thought there's no ROP because there's no line. And I called Dr. Gopal in the night and said, there's very strange looking vessel in the retina, but there's no ROP. And he warned me, he said, no, no, this is that time it used to be called rush disease. He said, no, no, this is very serious. Today, this baby is blind. I could not savage this. I, I called him after two weeks. So now we have learned a lesson that this is something called aggressive ROP. The new classification says aggressive ROP, AROP. And it is characterized by vessels which are shunting or which are not dichotomously branching and they progress very rapidly and they have to be treated within one or two days of the diagnosis. So we should pick up this disease. Okay, so here we have other patients. We can see there's some hemorrhage, there's some white line, there's some red line, there's some looping, there are abnormal vessels. So all these tell us, so here we can see, somebody may miss, see these vessels are dichotomously branching, but then suddenly they have started looping. So all these are photographs to show that there's abnormality and these are babies who need more advanced care. Now you can see here somebody referred this patient and they have seen this patient and they have drawn such a nice diagram of every vessel. And what have they written here? Bilateral tortures vessels, no ROP come after 10 days. Okay, so this is the mistake I did. This is the mistake somebody else has done. So then I called this person and said, you did everything good. You screened them on time. You entered everything well. You drew the diagram, but you didn't interpret this. This is where it has to be treated. If you see this, it needs immediate treatment. So that is what we try to teach. Uh, that even if you don't know what zone, what stage, you are confused. But you see abnormality of the vessels. You just say that this baby needs urgent treatment. So here, what is the treatment we do? We do laser, confluent laser. So we have done laser. And this is after three days we have checked. So this area is good. The, the hemorrhages have started resolving. The vessels have become less tortured. But this is not good. Here, the laser is not adequate. It has not responded. So what we need to do is go and treat these areas, pockets of avascular retina, right up to the most posterior part of the normal retina. So again, one should learn how to do the laser, not do homeopathic laser. As Professor Azad says, so this is one of my first laser. It's a homeopathic laser. See, there's a lot of skip areas I have left. I have just put some spots. This is how the laser should be. Confluent, complete, 
and the disease should go away completely and not leave any residues. So I think the training and learning how to do good laser is very critical. We are seeing a lot of babies coming to us uh, who have failed treatment because the treatment was suboptimal and that's a shame. So of course, if we didn't treat on time, then this is what will happen, that the retina will detach and then it will go into leukocoria and that is when the people will notice it. So, so if the child comes to us late or somebody has done inadequate laser or the child doesn't respond to laser, then this time. is... So, when to so here we have surgery, learned... We should refer for surgery the moment the retina starts detaching. And when you refer for surgery, then please do the hemogram, get it corrected, get the transfusion and then send for surgery because mostly you'll be sending to tertiary centers or to some other centers like to Delhi or to Madras or to Hyderabad. These babies almost always need transfusion. So it's very painful for the parents to come to a city and then say we can't do surgery for next three days. So always, as I said, from beginning only you start checking the hemoglobin, but if they come to you and they have to be referred, then get the hemogram corrected before they come. Now the recent A new treatment which has come up the, now in more recent yes, years course, is what we call as bevacizumab or avastin. That is so anti vegf I would suggest that everybody should read this article that anti vegf is being used left, right, and center, and people are using it just injecting and have no clue what has to be done. So I think important for the anti vegf is that it's a great benefit to babies. Uh, we are really seeing good outcomes, but there's a proper way to do it. There's a proper, uh, you know, management with the anti vegf how to give, how much dose to give, what to monitor. And then they need long-term follow-up. You can't just give it and say, no, you go somewhere else. So which babies to give, when to give, when not to give. So I think when we are giving anti vegfs it's very important to learn the technique and the details of that anti vegf treatment. It is a time bomb. After some time, the disease comes back. So they really need long-term follow-up. And then, of course, any center which is doing good ROP work must have place for rehabilitation and low vision because we will have suboptimal outcomes. Babies of all types will come to us. So it's very important that after you complete your treatment, the optical care, the refraction, and the vision training is very much required for these babies. So many children I see, they've been treated, but nobody has given them a pair of glasses. Almost 80% of them will develop myopia. So sometimes doctors' children get ROP, then they're very worried, or retina surgeons come to us, like, you know, what's going to happen to my baby? I just want to tell that ROP is a disease where you can get excellent outcomes. And this is our outcome of those babies who came to us before the retina detached. And we see that in 93% of the babies where it regressed on its own, that is, we were following these babies, they got 20, 40 or better vision. And more than 80% of babies whom we treated with laser injection, surgery, they got 20, 40 or better. So yes, there are a few babies, about 5 to 6% who will still progress and detach. A lot of these are those babies who didn't keep the appointments, who were non-compliant with treatment, or they had really a very fulminant course. But a majority of the children who get ROP, they will do extremely well with proper screening and treatment on time. So remember that, you know, these babies don't become blind by numbers. Each is blind individually. These are the babies we have treated. They grow amazingly. And we are very thankful to the neonatal ophthalmology teams who are working day and night to give them their right to sight. Uh, I'm open to suggestions and questions. I'm very thankful to my team and to all the people who supported me. My gurus, Professor Michael Tracy, who's no more with us, but his vision and his technique and technology has stayed and helped millions of children, not only in my center, but all over the world. And to Dr. Das, who initiated me into this work. Thank you very much, uh, Sumagra, for a very uh, wonderful presentation. And you very clearly, you uh, showed the important points which one must remember about ROP. And in the beginning, what you said, that ROP is not something uh, for anybody, you know, that anybody can, uh, you know, examine the baby and, uh, uh, you know, give his or her opinion. It definitely requires uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a commitment and, and also the training, which is very important. But nevertheless, we are open to people, you know, if they want to join and uh, they want to take up this job. 
So thank you very much for your presentation. We'll have, because we are running short of time, we'll go to the next presentation. And uh, Dr. Akash is here. So we will be talking about the most fascinating thing that has happened in the field of petrography of prematurity. I, Subhadra and me, we remember, you know, when there was no uh, fundus camera, pediatric fundus camera. And those days we had to rely on our indirect ophthalmoscope only. But nevertheless, we also had the video indirect. And in the beginning, you know, I'm talking of somewhere in 1999, uh, I had a video indirect, I got video indirect and we used to do the, you know, the uh, treatment and all. Maybe, you know, the first workshop we did in Pune, if uh, Subhadra remembers, I, I projected it, uh, you know, on the, uh, you know, uh, 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 on the, uh, you know, the, uh, 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 Projected it screen. on the screen. Uh, cut, eh? screen on the screen. Screen, yes, on the screen, and uh, that was a very revealing thing. It, I did it, but now so we did these workshop as she said on WH and all that. But because, uh, but now I'm not wasting any time. We'll uh, go on to the non-contact white field neonatal imaging. Now the Indian companies are also making it. The good thing is about that, and uh, let us hear Dr. Akash. Uh, who is, uh, you know, a, a consultant in Avi Prashad and must be bubbling with energy under the guidance of uh, Dr. Subhadra. So, Akash, can you carry on your yes, presentation? Yes, Dr. Thank you very much. So, very good evening to all those who are connected. So, next Can you thing. increase your uh, volume, Akash? Can you hear me, Dr. Uh, Azad? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, uh, thank now, you very much. Yes. Okay. So in next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, I will uh, uh, give a holistic approach on the imaging in ROP. So as uh, Dr. Subhadra was telling uh, that ROP is an epidemic of the 21st century. It is mainly the uh, disease of the vascularity in the premature infant, uh, babies where uh, the blood vessels uh, kind of proliferate and cause retinal detachment. However, it is a time-bound vasoproliferative uh, disease. So you have these 30 days to light. So uh, we have a window of period where we should uh, essentially diagnose and treat uh, to prevent this needless blindness in these uh, babies. So the World Health Organization conducts the World Prematurity Day on every November 17th to, uh, you know, to uh, give a boost to all the pediatric problems and ROP is one of the main concerns by the World Health Organization. So this is an unfortunate site that is the stage 5 ROP. This is what is must be prevented and it's a preventable blindness and it's a needless blindness. So let me jump quickly into the, the plethora of uh, diagnostic uh, modalities that are available in ROP. So we can broadly classify the imaging system into contact and non-contact. And we have various uh, contact system like uh, Trinetra and uh, your red cam. And in non-contact, you have the optos and which is a pseudo color and you have also the claris, which is a true color. So the step to capture fundus photo of ROP babies. So as we know, these ROP babies are extremely fragile. So as uh, we have been talking in the last 30 minutes that along with the technology, we need tenderness of care. So as Dr. Subhadra, I remember always telling it requires uh, a heart, hand and mind going all together. So it is very important we take care of the baby. So uh, it's important that we do not over instill these drops. And it is very important to reduce the phenylephrine concentration to 2.5%. We have commercially available few drops. And along with that, we can also prepare the drops to reduce the concentration of the phenylephrine. It's very important to cover these warm clothing in every baby that we screen to prevent hypothermia and hypoglycemia. These are very important precautions that needs to be taken during any imaging. Proper hand hygiene and autoclave instruments are a must because these babies can have conjunctivitis. And if one baby has a conjunctivitis, then Every other baby in the NSU can have conjunctivitis. So it is very important to stress on hand hygiene and autoclaved instruments. And as we have discussed, these babies can uh, desaturate within no time. So it is always important to examine these babies under the radiant warmer along with the pulse oximeter connected. 
and it's always important to have a neonatologist or a pediatrician in the floor or nearby wherever you are conducting a laser or even for that matter an imaging. And these are the digest signs that is hypoglycemia, hypothermia, bradycardia, bluish discoloration of skin and lips, cyanosis. All this must be uh, kept in mind whenever you are examining these fragile babies. So quickly jumping into the contact system. So as we can see here, there is a probe and it is in contact with the cornea and they, you need a coupling agent, either a visco or a jelly. Uh, and the probe is placed and the diagnostic technician uh, kind of monitors on the screen where he can adjust the illumination as well as the adjustment of the focus. So what are the advantages of contact uh, uh, imaging system? One important advantage is it is portable. So you can take this to every corner or every NSU that you go. Another important uh, uh, advantage is, uh, uh, you know, you can send these images by teleconsult to the ophthalmologist. If a trained technician, he can send these images. So let us see briefly the video here. So you can see here in this video, the probe is in contact with the eye and a coupling agent has been placed and uh, the doctor is monitoring the image on the screen here. And uh, we can, there is a foot pedal to focus and to increase or decrease the illumination and simultaneously the images can be captured. So, but it is a little bit of, uh, you know, technician driven or the technician requires some amount of training in this contact imaging system. So here you can see two images where one image gets a pristine clarity where the technician is able to focus and give us that good image. Whereas in dark and pigmented fundus, or if you are not able to focus, then you may not get an appropriate image. So it requires some amount of training as far as the focusing is concerned, as far as the illumination is concerned, but is a very handy portable uh, instrument. So this is another example where you can see FEVR or ROPAR like uh, uh, thing. And uh, these folds where we can focus on these tractional folds. And this is a baby with the CRVO, which I had screened in an NICU where baby had congestive cardiac failure. So the portable nature of these uh, contact devices helps us to take, carry these devices to an NICU and these images can be easily uh, given by teleconsult. So this is a COVID uh, child had COVID and when we uh, screened, there was acute retinal necrosis on the periphery, which we can indent by this uh, indenter and images can be captured. So what are the disadvantages of contact system? Since there is a corneal apposition, there is high chance of infection. And uh, this uh, technology cannot be used uh, in uh, immediate post-operative condition and also in immediate post anti vegf injected eyes. So another important modality that we have coming to the uh, non-contact system is the ultra wide field pseudo color imaging by Optos where you can see the octos gives us a 200 degrees of uh, field of view and uh, various signs and uh, can be easily captured the staging and the ridge, the proliferation and also the detachment can be easily captured by these uh, pseudo color images. But the disadvantage is the pseudo color nature. So here you can see uh, the orange is green pseudo color. But also this imaging system, the wide field uh, non-contact system, what it helps is not only in ROP babies, even in this uh, preschool babies like three years or four-year-old child, uh, it helps us to get these quick images. These three-year-old, four-year-old children, they are not very uh, cooperative in your OPD. So these uh, non-contact uh, ultra wide field images, they give a quick image in a single capture of 200 degrees. As you can see, this child had incontinentia pigmenty with multiple scarred uh, pigmentary lesion. And the fundus showed uh, this retinal fold, which was running. Whereas the other eye, the left eye showed, uh, uh, you know, like a fibrovascular prolif. And uh, we managed the right eye with the fold with the scleral buckle with the subretinal fluid drainage and the left eye with the, uh, you know, vitrectomy with laser. So what I need to convey here is non-contact is much more quicker and uh, it can capture even in small pupil of, uh, you know, 3 mm or 2.5 mm, they can give these ultra wide field images. But the pseudo color nature of this image is something that we need to be. Uh... So this brings us to the hot topic of the 
uh, this uh, year or so. So where first time a uh, true color image has been captured in neonates. So this is made possible by Zeiss Claris 700 where we have used. So this happened because one of our OPDs, we noticed that both our contact system as well as our optos was not working. So now how we capture these images uh, came to our mind. And uh, what we noticed that we had a Claris 700. Uh, so Claris 700 gives us the true color non-contact imaging. So this is the first time where LED lights, these LED illuminating lights, which have blue, red and green diodes give this uh, true color image. So what do you mean by true color means exactly as you see in your uh, indirect ophthalmoscopy or your fundus examination, similar, the same colors are seen on the fundus imaging. So what it helps us is it helps us in uh, better counseling the parents, in better education of the trainees and also in better appropriate staging of this ROP. So let me just show a video how we captured these images. As you can see, all the precautions has to be taken uh, in uh, warm clothing and covering of these babies. And uh, Alfonso lead speculum is applied here. So the way we capture here is the flying baby position. So as you can see, the diagnostic technician is holding the baby with the flying baby position where one arm is uh, kind of uh, uh, resting on the chest of the baby and other, other hand on the head. And uh, the monitor, here you can see in this Zeiss Claris where you have a pupillary guiding monitor which helps in the alignment of the pupil. So the advantage of Zeiss Claris is uh, what we can see, it has the fastest image acquisition speed of less than 0.2 seconds. So it has the fastest image acquisition speed. Even when the baby is moving its eyeball, we can see these images are captured in a very fast uh, pace. So we also compiled these uh, images into an atlas. And as we can see, it is very important to, as we can see, the way we conquered polio or smallpox, as Dr. Subhadra was telling, is mainly by education and by awareness. So I also believe that the way we can conquer ROP is only by awareness and by in increasing the education. So we came up compiling all these images into a book, which helped us in um, uh, sharing these uh, uh, images. So you can see these are the true color images where you can see this is a case of AP ROP. Uh, like where you can see how clearly the vascular ridge and uh, even the vascular neovascular fronts are so nicely seen here. And uh, we went on documenting these images before the anti VEGF injection. Here you can see the aggressive AP ROP before the anti VEGF injection and how it has uh, kind of uh, the aggressiveness has come down post uh, anti VEGF injection. And similarly, you can see here how the temporal neovascular fronds in both the eyes and post anti VEGF injection, it has kind of uh, reduced in plus. And how you can see how aggressive this uh, APROP is and post anti VEGF, it has uh, regressed. And similarly, we also tried, since Zeiss Claris gives us 133 degrees of field of view, we also tried uh, custom montage in these babies. This is the first time. Uh, uh, custom montage has been tried in any neonatal eye and we can see with these montage images you are also able to get 200 degree of ultra wide field images even in Claris. So we also uh, went on recording these images before and after anti vegf injection and you can see how nicely the ridge of the uh, threshold ROP is captured here and uh, it has regressed uh, after laser. So this is for the first time we have also published in Eye London this uh, entire thing. And uh, it has got a good reception and has become the reader's choice for the month in I London also. And this is our team which has helped us in capturing these images. So I would just want to conclude that imaging is very important. Imaging is the way forward because it is the way forward where we can educate more people. We can include more awareness, helps in teleconsultation, helps in policy making and also in medical legal documentation of these ROP cases. And uh, this gives us a holistic uh, view on uh, documenting these cases. So with this, I would conclude my talk. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your pictorial presentation. Definitely it was, uh, you know, very interesting. And uh, my only comment is this, that 
I think this Claria system definitely gives a good picture, but uh, it's very, you know, not very comfortable position, you know, for a neonate. Um, uh, I think that's a big point. Unless the rice people, they make something like, you know, a handheld camera, which will be attached to the, the, the camera system. I think till that time, you know, we'll keep our finger crossed. So, uh, nevertheless, pictures are definitely very good and very nice. Uh, Devesh, you have some comments to make. Please make some comments. Yes, sir. Uh, so, in addition to what Dr. Akash has already told, one of the other advantage of Claris will be that uh, it will help us uh, in true assessment of the plus disease. Because with the contact systems, there occurs some blanching of the vessels. Even in good hands, the plus sometimes decreases to pre plus. Blanching is not much. If you put the contact solution, no? Yes, sir. So blanching is not there. But yeah, definitely, it may, may, sometimes it may be. And as you said rightly, you know, in plus disease, you know, you can also assess the amount of how much is the plus disease that will be in non the advantage of non contact uh, uh, fundus camera. So uh, I think that's right. Anything else, uh, Devesh? Yes, sir. sir yeah. the both we have five minutes to go. If there is any question to Dr. Subhadra or Dr. Rakash, uh, you can ask any question. Uh, if there's uh, some viewers are there. Any I just question? wanted to add one small point that, yes. uh, you know, while we did this on Claris and we've also done on Optos, what we wanted to highlight is that there are many retina surgeons who may not be able to afford a pediatric camera because the number of babies who come to them may be less or they don't have a team to use that camera. So what we are trying to say is that even your normal fundus camera, you can use it. And the, the babies were assessed for their safety. There was no issue about apnea or anything. We did complete study on that. So actually, because it in the video, it looks quite highness, but actually it just takes 0.2 seconds. Whereas with the contact systems, it takes five to seven minutes to image. So actually the stress on the baby is very short time. It's a very short time. You just mm -hmm. lift it, put it there, it clicks and it's done. So so that way, uh, you know, while it may look uh, very highness, but the speculum is there for contact, for non-contact. So that speculum will be there always. But there's the fastness of this system uh, and so I'm sure that, you know, if you don't have this camera, you have any other cameras which you are using in your, you may have a top con, you may have other cameras. So we're just trying to show that even your normal camera, you can click that picture to show it to the parent or to share it with some expert whom you want to show it. Uh, and uh, yeah. bank position. I think that's a good message. What you have said, even if you have a, uh, you know, the non-contact camera for adults, you can make a, a picture out of it, uh, definitely. I think that's a good message. Uh, is there anything any anyone wants to ask any question? Uh, Subhadra, ma'am, uh, ma'am, have you tried uh, angiography as well on the Claris? Yeah, uh, we have not tried, but we have started doing OCTs uh, on our optos and on our uh, spectralis. And Akash is coming up with that publication very soon. It's showing amazing uh, results. Uh, but uh, Tapas in our network, he has done angiogram on. Um, Claris and he has done some other things also. Uh, just keep a watch out. Uh, new things are coming. I don't want to reveal everything. Uh, some of it will be at AIUS and some of it will be coming in other publications. So uh, it's uh, some very, very exciting things are happening uh, from our country. Uh, you know, Dr. Vinekar already did the OCT many years back with the adult OCT. The same thing he showed that adult OCT can be used for babies. And so, you know, so we as a country, I think, are doing extremely good from all people, you know, Dr. Azad's group and Parijat in all these two, they have done a lot of FFAs on the red cam. And uh, I'm sure that you can do it here. You can do it on Optos or on Claris also FFA. Thank you very much. Uh, there is no more questions. Uh, many thanks to Savadra. Savadra, as I told you, please take care of the IROP meeting in Kochi and I'll not be there for some okay. reasons. I will try. And I cannot reach your level, but no, no, no. No, <laughs> you, you are the torch bearer for them because I, I, I will not be there for you know the teaching of Buddha. Buddha said, "Up the bhava means you take you take your own path. I am not going to tell you anything. You take this way, that way, or that way. You just decide your own because I will not be there for all the time. 
सो दैट वाज द बुद्धस टीचिंग सर ये भी बोलते हैं बिना गुरु बिना गुरु ज्ञान कहां से पाऊं तो गुरु ने ऑलरेडी मंत्र दे दिया है थैंक यू वी आर ऑलरेडी ऑन द जॉब तो भैया एंड थैंक यू डॉक्टर आकाश फॉर योर वंडरफुल पिक्चर्स एंड वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन एंड देवेश फॉर योर कमेंट्स सो शैल वी क्लोज नाउ सम गाइस पीपल हियर यस वी वांट टू थैंक द रेडियो टेक फॉर द एक्सीलेंट सपोर्ट uh can you tell us from the edutech how many people uh participated or how many delegates were watching it will be after the conclusion we i'll okay. okay okay thank you very much many thanks for giving this opportunity thank you